In this short presentation, I'll provide an introduction to the SAMR model, that's S-A-M-R. This model can be used when analysing the integration of technology into the classroom. I'd like to start this introduction to the SAMR model by drawing comparisons with Bloom's taxonomy. Most educators are familiar with the researcher Benjamin Bloom. He developed Bloom's taxonomy in 1950 and this taxonomy is still strongly used today. The original taxonomy was revised and modified by Lauren Anderson and David Catrall, two of Bloom's former students. Both models focused with the cognitive domain. One point to appreciate that while Bloom's taxonomy represents the learning process, it does not indicate that learners must start at the lowest level and work their way up. Instead, the learning process can be initiated at any point and the lower taxonomy levels will be encompassed within the scaffolding learning task. The modified version of the taxonomy is commonly presented in the form of a pyramid with a higher level of thinking located towards the top of the pyramid. As technology is becoming more ubiquitous throughout society, it's inevitably being used more and more in the classroom. Consequently, various technologies have been mapped to this pyramid, normally accompanied by examples as to how technologies, how these technologies can be used in the classroom. I've came across several versions of this digital taxonomy, digital blooms taxonomy, but have decided to create this version myself. I've inserted logos of various free technologies that you can use with your students. One point worth noting is technologies are not limited to one level. For example, Facebook in this diagram is on level two, understanding, but could equally fit in to other levels. Starting at the lowest level, in essence, this is where the SAMIR model comes into effect. The SAMIR model it's used to analyse how technology is being used in teaching. The model puts a framework or a scaffold on the adoption of technology in the classroom. The SAMIR model or the, the technology adoption cycle coined by Ruben Pintura is divided into four distinct uh, stages. Substitution augmentation, modification and redefinition. Hence the name, the SAMR model. This model, the SAMR model, is further divided into two distinct sections, the enhancing and transforming sections. Personally, I keep wanting to dress up my substitution and augmentation activities but I have to remind myself of the caveat that there is nothing wrong with using substitution or augmentation if it's appropriate for the task. I constantly have to remind myself do not use technology just for the sake of it. Use it where there's a pedagogical benefit for you or for the students, ideally for both. Using Bloom's taxonomy as a comparison again, S would be the lowest level of Bloom's and R would be the highest and there's nothing wrong with having learning at the lowest levels of Bloom's. So why should the SAMR model be any different? This presentation will briefly introduce the four distinct levels. Another presentation will follow, which will give more examples of each one of the different levels of the model. Substitution. This is where technology acts as a, a direct tool substitute with no functional change. The clearest example of substitution that I can think of is in so many different classrooms is the use of the smart board or the limited use of the smart board technology. For example, I've seen teachers using the smart board just to use hangman and concentration and crossword puzzles albeit to improve the vocabulary skills of their students. However, this drag and drop of letters gets old very quickly. And it essentially becomes then a very expensive bulb and projector when a normal whiteboard could have done the job. Augmentation. This is where technology acts as a direct tool substitute with slight functional improvement. 
a good example of this is a searchable PDF. What can happen is you can give your students some documentation to read and with this search functionality in it they can search for particular terms and enable them to focus their reading. However, the core teaching and learning activity is barely improved. Modification is the next stage. This is where technology allows for significant uh, task redesign. The example that I like to use here is the use of clickers within the classroom. You can use them with, a, um, as a set of quizzes that integrate into your PowerPoint slides and it can be direct quiz questions that essentially have right and wrong answers or indeed you can alternate to discussion starter questions and then the students must respond and they may decide to answer these in groups. Again, this is a modification of your current teaching activity through technology. The final stage of the summer model is redefinition. This is where technology allows for the creation of new tasks previously unconceivable. An example of this would be communicating with students in another classroom, potentially in another country through the likes of Skype. This collaborative learning that can take place through this facility would not be feasible if students had to travel from one country to the other or indeed one county to the other. So the technology allows for the creation of a new task previously unconceivable. So in conclusion, the summer model, the substitution, augmentation, modification and redefinition was introduced to you as part of this presentation. This video will be supported by additional videos illustrating examples of each one of the elements of the model. They will be available at a later stage through the blog enhancingteaching.com. The model is very practical in my opinion and could be used as a CPD tool to encourage educators to self-assess their teaching activities and then set personal targets to progress along the model. If you are interested in seeing something like this in action, do a Google search for Technology Integration Matrix or TIM, T-I-M. This matrix, designed in the US, illustrates how teachers can use technology to enhance the learning for what they refer to as their K-12 students. I'd like to acknowledge the sources that I've used for this presentation. I've purposely used a Digo bookmark rather than direct links to the websites to share these references as this will enable you to always receive the most up-to-date set of references that I have on the SAMR model. I've mentioned my blog in the last slide so I won't flaunt on it too much but there is a significant amount of resources for teachers available through this site all of which are free of charge so please feel free to visit. Thank you to th for taking the time to watch this short video.